Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be showing you a step-by-step -step workflow and transform this scene with the new scatter tool in D5 2.8. So the focus of today's video is the new scatter tool in D5 2.8. We're going to take the scene and transform it into this. If you're new to the channel, here we talk all about architectural visualization. So you can help us out by subscribing to the channel, liking and sharing the video so we can reach out to others. So let's start with the SketchUp scene composition. So here's how you can optimize your SketchUp model. Now for the terrain, it's split by group and material so we can test out the scatter feature. The main house and the walkway are on a separate model so we can try out the new call effect from the new 2.8 version. So here is my D5 scene setup. I've added a forest backdrop to cover the horizon line and manually placed some rocks from the asset library. And I've also set some views so that we can refer to as we go along with the video. So to add scatter, let's select the last option here on the toolbar. You can choose to add by material or model selection. Hit the X keyboard shortcut to select between the two and hold the control key to add and subtract from your selection. So we're going to select this grass material and it will highlight this outer portion of the terrain. And we're going to click to confirm our scatter object. And as a last tip, make sure to rename your scatter object and also place it on the proper layer. So let's review some settings. So with these first couple of settings, you can re-edit your scatter selection, access the global presets and studio. So feel free to explore these further. Now, these three areas is where the magic happens. First, we have the scatter area here. You can manage the host material or model. You can divide these into the sub areas where you can scatter more different models within them. So we're going to explore this further in the video. Next, we have content here. You can control the models you scatter in the area. And last, you have the effects here. You will find any effects you can apply to your scatter in version 2.8. They added a new call effect. And we're also going to explore this further in the video. So we have our material selection ready. So let's add some trees. So let's go into the assets library and I'm going to pick three trees. And as I select them, you can see them appear in my selected area. Notice how they are also equally distributed, occupying 33% of the scatter area. If we expand these three dots, we can access some more settings. You can turn each of these trees off, delete or replace them. For example, if I want to replace this one tree, I can select this last option which will open the asset library and I can select another model to replace it. And if you click on each one of these models, you can expand to see more settings. So a good practice if you want, you can turn each one of them off and focus at one tree at a time. So here you can adjust the scale, which adjusts the size of the model. The larger this number, the bigger the model. Next, you have the probability of occurrence, which refers to how often you will see this tree. If you remember, each one of these models occupy 33%, but if I increase the value for this one tree, it will readjust to a higher percentage than the other two. Next, you have the generating direction. By default, it is vertical, but you can also switch this so that it's parallel to the surface normal. And last, you have the collision volume, which controls the collision radius of the trees. This refers to the radius of how close these trees can be to each other. The higher the value, the larger the radius, and the further apart the trees will appear. And the smaller the value, the smaller the radius, and the closer these trees can be to each other. Now that we've adjusted some individual parameters, let's go over to the distribution setting, which will affect all the models in the area. First, we have density, which refers to the number of models that are scattered. The higher these volumes, the more models you will add to the area. Next, we have cluster size, basically referring to a group of trees that are extremely close to each other. The larger this value, the larger the group of trees. And then you have settings like cluster noise and cluster blur, which will help you to adjust the randomness and the edges of the cluster. This is going to help you to achieve a more organic look. 
So with these settings, we can see that D5 gives you everything if you really want to get technical or you can simplify and use one of the preset masks. The good thing about the presets is that it will help you manage these settings with a black and white map. The darker the area, the lower the density. And if you have any gray pixel, it will help to create a smooth transition to achieve a more natural effect. Obviously, this will be visible on a much larger landscape. So feel free to explore these in your model. Now, if you still need to randomize and create more organic scatter, you can adjust the transformation settings. Here you can adjust the minimum and maximum values for scale, rotation, and offset. And this is going to help you further randomize the objects so they look as natural as possible. So here we are back in our main view with those settings. And by adjusting those three settings, I can do as much and as little as I want. Obviously, I'll adjust this even more. But for now, I feel like the scene can benefit from some manually placed trees so that we can improve the composition. So we're going to do that and then we'll move on to the next scatter. So this is my view with the addition of manually placed trees. At this point, it's a good idea to save your scatter preset. This is a new option with the new D5 2.8 upgrade. So go ahead and save this, use it on your next project so you can avoid all of these steps. So one of the things you will notice in real life vegetation is that everything is completely random. And with this new scatter tool, not only can you randomize the assets that you spread in the scene, but you can also randomize the area. So here we have our new scattered object and this is where you manage the area settings. If I select image divide, this is going to add a sub area and from here you can add a preset to define this sub area. If I add this checkers preset, I can add two sub areas and in each I can add different models. This is already pretty useful, but if I want it in one of these sub areas, I can add another preset to create more sub areas. And you've guessed it, in these sub areas, I can add more models. So hopefully you get the idea. You can get extremely detailed if you want to as far as your landscape, but we're going to keep it simple. So I will add this preset, which already looks and feels organic and randomized. And I'll set the division number to three so we can keep it at a total of three sub areas. As for the preset, I can select between four UV mapping options. This is going to help you set how you want the texture to be mapped over your area. You can choose between fit, stretch, UV, and tile. And once you set this option, you can now start to add models into the sub areas. Now, as we start to add the models, hopefully you can see how powerful this tool really is. From here, you can start to do a few things. You can increase the density to fill up some of these areas as much as possible. In some of these areas, I am adding one model to keep it simple. And in others, I am adding more than one. To randomize, you can adjust the distribution and transformation settings. Or to keep it simple, you can use some of these presets to automate all of these settings. At this point, you can tell that there are a lot of great things about this scatter tool, but one in particular is the scatter presets that automate all of these settings. So for example, in this section of the landscape, I'm going to create a new scatter object, but this time apply a preset from the scatter category. So this is going to bring in grass, shrubs, any flowers, a unique type of vegetation based on the preset that you chose. But above all, all of these presets look pretty amazing. Now if we look closely, the grass scatter overlaps the walkway to the house. And if you remember, this is a separate model from the terrain. So in this case, we want to use the cool effect to extrude certain objects from the scatter. So if we head over to the effects panel, select cool from the options, and I'm going to select the object in my scene that I would like to exclude the grass from. This is going to include the walkway, the rocks, the trees, or you can choose anything else that you would like to exclude. Once you're done, confirm your selection and those objects should be clear of the grass and the entire scene should make more sense. 
Now, if we expand these settings, we can adjust the call range to set the distance from the selected models. This is also referred to as the fall off area. And if you expand the fall off area, you can adjust the distance, density, scale, and noise to further adjust how you want the transition from the scatter to the selected objects. So this looks just about right and from here we have just a few more areas to fill out the scene is really starting to come to life for this mid section i'm going to add another scatter preset not going to worry much about making any adjustments and lastly i'm going to add a scatter for the fallen leaves on the walkway obviously these trees need to look really randomized so i'm going to tweak the transformation settings and i'm going to add a mass preset to adjust the distribution So this new scatter tool is a complete game changer for the D5 platform. It has just about everything you need to create forest environments like this. It gives you total control over every asset, but it also has enough presets in case you want to get things done quick. And if anything, I am more interested in what's coming next from D5 render. They've also recently added a new AI enhancer tool. If you want to see the tutorial for that video, there'll be a link in the description as well as on the screen. So things are looking promising. As always, be sure to like the video and share and I'll see you guys next time.